for one class. He's working with his great, fantastic, amazing director, me, on his upcoming <laughs> one-man show, Imprints. Of which, this is an excerpt. You were king of the world, receiving recognition from your friends, and cheers of praise as you were holding the back of a truck as it drove down the street. Nothing felt better than that. When I was a kid, it was so exciting to sneak on the back of a truck without the driver seeing you and to go for a fun little joyride. However, on the flip side, nothing was worse than being caught doing it. With the exception, of course, falling off. That was definitely a bad thing. <laughs> I remember one morning in the fall of 78, when I was going to school, I was riding on the back of a big brown truck that had three letters in its name. It was great until I heard, Vinci, get off there now! I looked and I froze in terror. It was Terry, my dad's best friend. Terry had this strange Spanish accent, sort of a Puerto Rican, Mexican, Middle Eastern Spaniard type. He <laughs> was very distinctive, and I was very distinctively busted. I jumped off the back of this exciting yet slowly moving truck, landing squarely on my ass with a thud. I just knew I was dead. In fact, I was deader than Slippery, my favorite snake. That's the snake my little brother killed by biting off its head. <laughs> little brothers bite off snakes' heads. I ride on the back of trucks. Who am I to judge? I just knew this time I was dead. I got up slowly and in discomfort, as I knew I was an inch shorter due, due, to, the, due to the spinal trauma my butt had just suffered. But not as bad as it definitely will. I hobbled over towards Terry. Terry, of course, showed no sympathy. No, are you all right? Are you okay? He just began to lecture me. How can you do this? What if your mother saw you? What if your father saw them? You could have got killed. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was doing okay until you distracted me and I fell and landed on my ass and go to myself. <laughs> and I was probably smiling because right then, wham, right in my ass, right where I fell. Terry had this cruelly precise aim. These days, if someone other than your parents hit you, lawyers would be crawling out of the streets, out of the sewers where they reside, handing you their business cards. Child services would be swooping down from a helicopter to pull you away. The news would be carrying the story on page one. Back when I was a child, you did it, you deserved it, you got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terry now begins to drag me towards my building. Again, these days, child services, 911, lawyers. Those days, as I was being dragged into my parents' building, adults in the neighborhood would just look and give a side glance. Oh, it's that bishop kid again. And they'd go on to their business. So as my father's best friend drags me to the front of the door by the back of my shirt, I thank him in my mind, at least, for using the elevator as we go up the five flights to my apartment. <laughs> yes, I'm still throbbing. <laughs> at my apartment, Terry knocks on the door. A couple of seconds later, my father's asking, Who is it? John is Teddy. I gotta speak to you about something. My father opens the door, sees Terry holding me by my shirt as I'm sitting on the floor. My father, not looking stunned or even concerned to what is transpiring, just looks at me and tells me to get to my room. I guess adults had some kind of telepathy that hopefully one day I would break. So I run past my father and into my room. I know my father is getting all this information concerning my transgressions, and I'm sure that there's a whipping that will soon take place. Naturally, I start panicking in my room and figure, okay, I gotta get out of here. I look out the window, which had no fire escape, of course, as it was planned upon my conception. <laughs> Adults in my youth could also predict the future. <laughs> I look out the window and wonder, what would Spider-Man do? But who am I kidding? Spider-Man wouldn't get into this kind of trouble. I couldn't use my Wonder Twin powers because I was by myself. <laughs> I now hear the front door close, and I know I have a couple of minutes to draw up my last will and testament. But who would take care of my snakes? Not my brother, of course. <laughs> Richie, get a hold of yourself. It's not going to be that bad. Wait, I really messed up. I'm going to get three whippings. Three! One for what got me into this mess? Oh yes, the truck. One for my father's friend having to drag me home, and worse than them all, one for embarrassment to my father or what to do. I could hide, but that would only get me into more trouble. Then I heard, the chant. Oh, no. See, my father had this corny yet sadistic <coughs> ritual. 
In his room, he had on a third hook in his closet a black leather size 36 belt to be used only in cases of disciplinary action. He would take the belt off the third hook and fold the belt into halves so he could make three distinct snapping sounds. <laughs> so you would know the hunt was on. <laughs> I say hunt not just because of the snapping sounds, which sounds like rifle fire, but because my father, who was not a hunter, loved the thrill of the hunt <laughs> for his kids. <laughs> After the third snap of the corny but sadistic, and may I now add effective chant, begin in this eerie voice. Fee, fi, fo, fo. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll crush his bones to make my bread. Followed by three more snaps of the belt. Be fi, fo, fo. Dad, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> okay, to make a long story short, I can hide, but I have learned that hiding only prolongs the corrective measures or attitude adjustments nowadays to be referred to as enhanced interrogation techniques. <laughs> so, as my father enters the room and begins to beat the crap out of me, I just have two thoughts. Was riding on the back of the truck worth it? And two, <laughs> and two it could be worse. It could be a whipping from my mom. Everybody knows that an ass whipping by your mom totally exceeds the far-reaching psychological consequences of getting your ass kicked by your dad. There's nothing worse than having a woman who bore you, who raised you up, who told you time after time how much she loved you, whip you. I remember one time my mother was giving me a whipping, and don't get me wrong, I didn't get whipped every day, just when I did something stupid, which was like once a week. And I don't know why I was getting my ass kicked this time. My mom was leaning down and hitting me with her hands, and I'm laughing. And I'm told nowadays that laughter is your body's natural reaction to fear. Back then it was just stupid. <laughs> so what happens when I laughed? Yes, she hits me harder. And I continue to laugh, not because it didn't hurt. It did, but again, out of fear. Well, she begins to swing one more time, and I kind of block her flow with my hands on her wrist. Mental note, this is a... Bad. <laughs> I locked eyes with my father, who was sitting down watching what he believed was entertainment. Let's face it. Let's face it. Back when I was younger, we only had three networks. <laughs> father, who didn't have a look of concern, and some might say horror in his face, gives me some words of advice. And my father has always given me advice: don't steal, don't do drugs, don't talk to strangers, etc., etc. He reached into his repertoire of fogly advice and screams, RUN! <laughs> and I do. I move as fast as I've been in my life and run towards my sister's room. It's safe there. She doesn't eat snakes, by the way. <laughs> to give you an idea of the layout of this apartment, my sister's room is right off the kitchen. Right off the kitchen. And this room was one of those bright 100-watt light bulbs, the kind you, that you can get sunburned from. Even the roaches <laughs> used sunglasses when they were in this kitchen. <laughs> and dive behind the bed, which was across from the door. And then I heard the doorknob turning. And then a banging on the door. Loud, thunderous banging. <laughs> Richie, let me in. <laughs> I replied in my timid 13-year-old voice, No, you're going to hurt me! I re she replies, If you don't let me in, I'm going to kill you. I screamed back with all the fear, No, go away! Then I heard what could only be described as a crackle of thunder as a loud boom hits the door, and at that moment, and in slow motion, adults also have the power to slow down time. <laughs> and all scenes of terror have to happen in slow motion for the effect. The door begins to fall off its hinges <laughs> and lands right on the bed in front of me as I'm hiding behind it. And my mother standing in the doorway with her hands up to be, appears to be an angel with a hundred watt light bulb behind her head appears to be a halo. As she stepped closer and her head begins to eclipse the light, changing from that beautiful angel but to the angel of death, and her angel-like wings slowly transform into fists of discipline, I knew I was going to be a good little boy once I regained consciousness. <laughs> if I regained consciousness.